so okay, so now you're you you're a young kid in the Bronx. You you're learning the language and you're uh, learning the American culture and so forth. Um, were there big differences in life in um between life in 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 America, life in the Bronx, and life in Havana that like you were you know struggling with or or that just stood out to you? Yeah, there were a lot of times when, you know, first of all, I missed my friends because at that age, when we left Cuba at nine, you know, it, it, I couldn't understand the reason, but I was very grateful that we were together as a family. Uh, it was a different place because it was so large, New York City being what it is. And also the fact that, you know, my father and mother both worked and they worked so we can go get a better education. And they finally were able to get me from a public school where I learned the English language. When we moved to the Bronx, this was in the Heights. When we moved to the Bronx, got to go back to a marriage school. I went to Mount St. Michael High School in the Bronx. And there, I think it was on the eighth grade or, yeah, it was a seven or eight grade. And again, I, you know, was learning how Continue learning how to speak English, but it was a different adjustment. It wasn't home. I mean, the people didn't talk like us. People didn't eat food, same foods we ate. You know, fried bananas, maluros, uh, frijoles negro, moro. We didn't eat a, all that Cuban food. Now, in America, people would have bologna sandwiches. I mean, you know, what is that? <laughs> you know? And so we, for us, it was an adjustment with the food. It was an adjustment, not knowing what's going on. And, uh, uh, but you know what? We survived. And I, I was very lucky that met some good friends when I was in high school and I started learning how to play football in high school. So, I mean, they, and the reason was the coach saw this big mama loop me and said, Hey, you're going to play football. And I go, what's that? Because for us, football is <laughs> soccer. So, and Cuba is not a big soccer country. It's a baseball country. I wanted to play baseball, but I sucked in baseball. I wasn't good in it. So I wound up playing football for, um, at high school, which led me to playing ball in college on scholarships, which I was very lucky. Right. And, and you, uh, what is it, six, six, four? Yeah, I'm um, six, six, four. But back then I was slim and trim. I was like uh, 240, 250. Uh, now I'm um, 300 and plenty, if you know what I mean. Right, right. But I'm losing, I'm losing weight, you know. But uh, yeah, I was a big kid. I was this big kid, and at first I didn't know football. So as a freshman, I would sit the bench, and they didn't even have a helmet to fit me. So they ordered a white helmet. So I had this sitting in with a white helmet, not playing. I guess learning the game, and saying to myself, "Man, this is horrible. This sucks. I don't want to do this. I want to play baseball." But the sophomore year got a little better. And then finally in high school, I was able to, uh, you know, get some recognition, I guess, you know. But we became kind of Americanized then, you know. It was a, a big adjustment. But when you went home, we only spoke Spanish to our parents. And my parents, God bless them, they lost their parents in Cuba. And they couldn't go back at that time. So they were unable to see, to bury their parents. And uh, luckily there was my aunt who stayed in Cuba, who did. So you missed a lot of uh, life. I mean, picture yourself, you were nine years old and your family, all of a sudden you're uprooted, like in the cover of darkness, you're going. You're, you're coming to a different country that you don't speak the same language. It was a tough adjustment. And uh, I give credit to a lot of the immigrants that come here and they, you know, they're faced with these uh, battles of, getting by and learning the language uh, and being the best that they can be. Right. You, 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 you got a uh, scholarship, yes. a football scholarship that enabled you to be able to go to college, right? Correct. My parents right. could never afford it there. And you, um, you weren't a extraordinary student, like a, like a standout <laughs> scholastic student or anything no. like that? I, I right. just, yeah, my parents stressed education, but I, for me, I, it, it was hard. So I was, uh, didn't do very well. And uh, in, in high school, I had some disciplinary problems, you know, uh, rough housing, fighting, 
you know, kid stuff. And, uh, but to, uh, I didn't get uh, my grades, I guess, because I didn't understand English that well yet, that I just, my grades were not that good. So it limited me from getting more scholarships because uh, I didn't do well in my SATs, nor did I do well in my overall grade point average. But yet and still, you graduated from the University of Richmond, and then you like immediately um, went and applied for the FBI as soon as you graduated from uh, from college. And and the FBI reputably is an organization that puts a great emphasis on scholastic achievement and and you know intellectual prowess. Is, is that is that correct? Yeah, that is. But it's an interesting story. When uh, I was playing football, before the games, they would send you the day before to a, to watch a film, uh, a movie. So the movie at that time was Serpico. So I'm watching Serpico, and I said, man, this is what I want to be. I mean, long hair with a motorcycle, good-looking chick in the back. I got a sheepdog. I'm living in the village. Who would be better than me? So I said, I got to be this, you know. So what happened is I immediately found law enforcement or it was my senior year, by the way, I did five year plan in college. So my senior year, I said, I'm going to apply for the bureau. I made an application. And then, of course, you don't hear from the bureau for a while. Then I figured, let me try the NYPD. I tried all the police departments. Nobody was hiring at the time. Then one night I'm at home watching Univision. And there's this American guy, uh, non-native speaker, butchering the Spanish language, saying, you know, we're looking for Spanish-speaking agents. We need them to be in the FBI. And I go, wait a minute, I got an application there. Called up the next day. I go, hey, I got an application. Why are you even advertising? I'm here, ready to go. College graduate, I'm, let's go. And they said, well, let me get back to you. They got back to me. They said, well, you're not a citizen. I said, oh, my God, but I felt like a citizen. I mean, I loved America. I, I was here. I spoke English. I, this is my new home forever because we weren't going back. So sure enough, I go go get my uh, application and fill it out. And next thing you know, they're calling me within a couple of weeks to do the test. Uh, now, let me tell you something. This test, I guarantee a lot of people who are citizens in this country would not be able to pass. OK, right. like, you know, name some Bill of Rights. Uh, who is your governor? Who is your this? So I winged them. What are the government. three branches of government? Yes, three branches of government. So <laughs> I said, oh, my God. So anyway, I think the guy realized, he says, hey, this guy played football. He's coming to college. He speaks good English. Uh, we'll let him slide. So I got in and run back to the FBI. Here I go. And sure enough, uh, like a year later. So I applied in 75. But I didn't get an agent to be in 1980. And when I became an agent, I filed for Freedom of Information and Privacy Act and saw that a lot of letters from the CIA saying that because he's Cuban, be careful that he could possibly be a mole. So I said, are you kidding me? I said, I ate Castro more than you do. You ate Castro because you work it. I ate Castro because I, I lived it. I experienced right. it. So what happened was they they went by it, and I was the second Cuban-born FBI agent in the Bureau. And I got some looks at first, you know, like, who's this guy? He's Cuban. We don't let him work with the Cuban cases and this and that. So I was fortunate. I went into fugitives, bank robberies, terrorism, and I, I started working some anti, anti-Castro cases with the Omega-7, I don't know if you remember them. And mm -hmm. uh, so that's what I be, how I really began. And then suddenly the FBI started working drugs. And here I am, kid from the Bronx, speak Spanish fluent. There's a drug problem in the 80s. Boom, I was the perfect fit to start working dope. 